In this video, we're going to focus on how we can put in or color our background, or specifically the cells, the columns, and the rows. So this is a quite nice feature, but for this, we're going to use the Chart.js annotation plugin. So let's start to explore how to do this. In this video, we're going to answer one of the viewers' questions, which is how to add background color to the chart area in Chart.js. So this is a very interesting question, and basically there's two ways to answer this. However, this question came from one of my other videos about how to add an image on top of the bars in Chart.js, which is a very interesting topic. And if you scroll down here, we can see here the question came from uh, Ravant Kukarni. A special thank you to Ravant for asking this question. And this is what Ravant asked. Hi, th thank you so much for this. Do you know how I can add background color to the cells, columns, of the bar chart background yes hello so let's start to explore how to do this there's two ways to do it i'm going to show you the easy way first and another video i will make that will go more in a deeper and more advanced way i like the advanced way more and the reason why is this because you can loop and do some special features but it requires a bit more work and more coding compared to the default or the easy way so i'm going to show you the easy way because that one is very straightforward so the first thing what we need is here, go to chartjs3.com, getting started, and get the default code here. You see this error here, for some reason, Google Chrome gives my, me an error, but uh, I noticed on my other computer, it does not. So for some reason, I don't know what it is, but there's something wrong here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to copy this entire code here. I'm going to copy this code, and if you want to understand the JavaScript of this, please check out this specific video. I'm going to paste this in here, and once we paste this, I'm going to cut out this chunk of text, put it here, the title, save this, refresh, there we are. So now we have a bar chart here, and our bar chart is basically very straightforward. However, what we're going to do now is next, we're going to use, because this is the easy way, we're going to use a Chart.js plugin called the Chart.js plugin annotations, where you can create annotations, not only annotations, but also background colors. So that's a quite nice item. So we're going to do that one right now. So for that, we need the JavaScript library of Chart.js annotation, which you can find here in this link here, cdnjs.com. Version 1.0.2. Copy this specific script tag here, and then we go in here, and then in here, make sure you load the plugin after, I repeat, after the Chart.js library. Why? The Chart.js library has certain codes and this one uh, plugin or this specific plugin is dependent on whatever is in here so this is very important so if we save this now and refresh you can see nothing really happened why we didn't activate the plugin yet so that's what we're going to do now so if i scroll down here what i want to do here in the options i'm going to put in your comma let me say here, plugins and basically here put in brackets and in here we're going to activate the plugin so how do we activate the plugin we need to get the plugin name so if you go to Chart.js org, you see here the Chart.js dash plugin dash annotation, we get the official link for the pl to, for this specific plugin, which is the annotation plugin. So we're going to click here on get started, and all I want to do here is to get here the integration information. And what we need here could be two things. It could be this one or this one. Most likely it is this, because this is the official name, while this is just a name of the file itself. However, just get this one here, because this is the one that we need. You will see that this will work once we have this. Make sure there's a string. It's a string value, so quotation between them. Save this, refresh, and now you can see nothing happened yet. However, it is now active. So what we're going to do now is the following. We want to create first a few items in here. So we're going to put in here a plugins, basically the object of plugins. Make sure you have a comma here. And then in here, now we can start to do annotation. Annotation is basically the activation or the code or the namespace specifically for the Chart.js plugin annotation. So in here, what we have to do as well is, make sure we have this one, is the auto colors set on false. And the reason why we need to do this is if we don't do this, by default, it will be a gray uh, a solid gray column to block the view. So once we have this, if we save this now, let's refresh, nothing happens here. So now what we can do is add up a specific box. So if you want to 
play around with these cells. Basically, this is the cell here, and you can do it like a column or a specific row from beginning to end. So let's start to do that right now. So let's add up here now a annotation box. So we say annotation with an S, so annotations because we want to have now the specific settings because this is related to the plugin and now we need to have the uh, object specifically for the commands. And then we say here, let's say box number one. And in box number one, we're going to indicate a type and the type will be of course a string value which will be indicated as a box. And then what we're going to do here is basically indicate the coordinates. To get the coordinates, we need to get here, the array values here, you can see here, this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then here we have the array values, and this is here starts at zero, and this one here is one, number two, three, all up to 18. So we have here the Y scale array values, and we have here the X scale array values. So let's start to put in here the X min value, which would indicate the minimum value or the starting point. Let's put it on 0 0.5. And the reason why I put it on 0 0.5, then we'll be here between. This is 0 0.5, while this is considered number 1, and this is number 0. Why this works? It's like that certain way, because we have an offset built in here. The offset would be changed, and then you can change it as well. However, if you're using a category, you don't want to have an offset on the scale. Why? If not, it will cut this or clip this in half. So, very important here. So, let me just show you here. Let's say here an X value and a max X value. So, if you want to have... Um, what we can do here, 0 0.5 will be here up to 1. So we're going to get here number 1.5. And then the next would be here the y min value. So what I will do here, uh, the y min. And in here we could say, let's say here we want from 0 up to number 2. So we just have only this specific square or cell being colored. So we say here 0 comma y max equals uh, number two, if I'm not mistaken, yes, all right. If we save this now and refresh, we can see here now we get a specific color or we get a square B completely colored out. There's one issue here, of course, this should be in the background and now it's blocking the view. All right, so let's solve this by first of all, giving a proper color. So what I'm going to do here is just for the sake of it, I'm going to grab this black light color, which is basically this color here. I'm going to put it in here. So all we're going to do here is just say here, background color is capital C. This is a command as well. And we just paste it in here with a string value. If we save this and refresh, you can see here now we have this as well. There is a border color being extracted as well. And then uh, there's one more thing here you might notice. The color. So this is basically what we call the draw time. The draw time indicates when should you draw it. Right now, it is being drawn here. Now first the data set is being drawn and then on top of it the item itself. And this is not what we want because this is why if you have this solid you're not able to see it here. So let's change the draw time that when we're going to put this specifically at the back. So you can say here in the draw time, you can put here basically a draw time with a capital letter T. And then in here you can say by default it is set on draw after. And what I want to do here, we can say here, or sorry, def uh, after draw, that's the official default value. But that's undesirable because it blocks right now the view. So what we do, if we do before draw, what will happen, make sure we have a comma here, it will draw before, or it will draw this first, and anything else, including the grid lines, will be drawn afterwards, and then you will be layered up. So you have all these layers here, but maybe, you can see here, now we have this here, it looks nice. But what we can do here more specifically is before the data set draw. So basically we want to make sure oh, data sets with an S. We want to draw this before the data sets and that's basically how it works. That's how it works here. So what we can do here now if you do 0 0.2, save that. There you are. So now we have this here. And I can imagine you say, okay, we have this one, but what if I would like to have another one here? But that will be highlighted from top to bottom. Alright, so let's start to do that exactly as well. I'm going to copy another box here. So I'm going to comma here, indicating that there's another box here as well. So what we're going to do here now is, we say this box number two. Type exactly the same. The values here 
might be different. So we can say here, well, let's make this a greenish or a different color. But what I want to do here is I want from top to bottom. So we're going to grab here, and this is Wednesday. Remember, this is zero, this is one, and this is number two. So zero, 1.0, 0, sorry, 1.5 is here, this is two, and here is 2.5. So we have our x value of two point. Uh, 1.5 or up to 2.5 or we can even have bigger if you want doesn't matter so i'm going to just do here so i'm going to start at 1.5 and end at 2.5 and then our y value it starts at zero and it will go all up to number 18 so we can say here zero and then here 18. we save this and refresh you can see here now we get this nice greenish item here we have a before uh, before data set and you can see here it shows it but it's quite hard to see here because these colors of course conflict with each other maybe they should be that's a blackish but very light color here save this and refresh there you are it's quite tough to see but this is basically how you can do it what we maybe have to do here is just give this a solid color just to make this visible all right so that looks far more better all right so now we have this one here and what if we want to have for example from here all to the from left to right, but only from from 14 to 16. Let's do that as well. So we have another one. Let's scroll down here. Box number three. So I'm going to just paste this in here. We have this comma here, box number three. And then here, we can just select here where we want to start. Let's start here. Basically, we're going to start here at Monday. This is zero, but we need to start here at the beginning. It's zero, uh, minus 0 0.5. So that will be eventually the value. So we say here uh, 0 minus negative, negative value. And then here, this will be a 0 0.5. And then here, min and max will be the following. Oh, sorry, this will not be 0 0.5. Of course, why? We need to go to Sunday. Sunday is, well, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, so this is number 6. And number six, of course, will be even all at the end here, so 6.5. That's the value we want to grab. If we save this, you can already see what will happen. It will grab the complete chart area right now. But now, of course, I want to reduce this because I want from 14 up to 16. So let's put in here number 14, and then we put this number 16. I'm going to give this, well, these colors is fine. Save that and refresh. And now you can see here, now we have this control with all of these items here. We could make this even bigger. If you want to make this bigger, we could put this here 3.5, save this here. And you can see here now we expand that item as well. So the final item, because maybe we might say, well, hold on, what about the border colors? Can we do them as well? Yes, of course we can. So what I will do here is just go to the comma here. And then we say here border color is capital C, exactly similar to what we have here above. And then what we want to do here is the following. We need to specify them individually. So let's say here, well, I want to remove the border color. So what would be the best one? It would be just transparent. So if I save this now and refresh, you can see here now the border color has disappeared. It doesn't show anymore. And this might be the way you want to control it with all these colors as well. So if you like this video, I would highly recommend to check out my uh, ChartJS series regarding to this. This one is one standard of it but this is a part of an entire series that covers uh, over 10 plus videos covering everything of the charges annotation plugin which i highly recommend you to check out this is video one and it goes up and up with many more